your inner when you start journaling and meditating you start listening to your internal compass more and more and your inner gps your inner guiding light your guiding force and the more you can start tapping into it and start listening you're listening to the uncharted soul podcast a high vibe noble show for the souls who want more in their life relationship and bank account i'm your host cindy and i refuse to play by the rules I'm a clairvoyant medium and a master NLP practitioner. I'm also the founder of the Cindy Pate brand. So my mission is to show you that you have the power within you and that we are all truly intuitive souls. You want to learn more about your soul? Then you've come to the right place. Now let's begin. Hey guys, and welcome to episode number two of the Uncharted Soul. I'm so happy, I'm so excited, I just can't wait for us to get into it. But before we just deep dive into it and go into today's topic, I want to just take a a few moments to just center, to just align, and just ground into this moment, and just set our intention for this episode and what we plan to get out of it. So if you can, close your eyes. Um, then do it. If not, just be comfortable, just listen, and just say this in your head with me. So I'm just going to close your eyes, breathing in, and breathing out. So right now, I'd like to just take a moment to set the intention for this episode, that we go into it with a clear mind, with just clear clearness and openness to receive anything that we are meant to receive, to receive the energy of the moment, to receive the energy of just this episode and be present in this moment, that we go into it to receiving what we need to, with no judgment, with no falter, just an open heart. And I set the intention to go into this episode to let come through what is needed for you in this moment. And with that, I just want to breathe in. And out. And in. And out. And with the open eyes. Okay, guys, let's let's do this. <laughs> let's do this episode number two on the uncharted soul. And as I said in the previous episode, the uncharted soul is all about just this journey into discovering spirituality, discovering who you are, discovering the innermost parts of you, just dive deeping into what it is that thrills you, excites you, that is you, that just uh, lights you up. And whether that is being a clairvoyant medium, a tarot reader, an architect, a doctor, a farmer, an artist, whatever that is, but just deep diving into aspects of your soul that you may not have dived into, aspects of your soul that you may not have looked at, aspects of your soul that may have just been hidden or that you're not wanting to face. So this is the uncharted territory, the uncharted soul, the uncharted everything. So that's what we're going to dive deep into. And today's episode, I I would love to say to you, I have this all scripted and I know exactly what I'm going to say, but actually I don't. It is literally what come. It is literally what comes to me as I'm doing this, as I get guided to, as I get told and shown by spirit. Actually, so the one thing that I got shown and that I was thinking about just before I sat down to record this was things that I wish I'd known. Even a few years ago, in with my spirituality and my spiritual practice and and everything they're doing, and even in just my business, things that I wish I'd known then, and that was to actually have like a soul toolkit, if you want to call it. And that for me, my soul toolkit it consists of journaling, meditation, bit of bit of oracle card readings, not too heavy on that kind of reading and lots of grounding and being sorry my ears itching um and being one with nature and why 
I know you're probably going, yeah, okay, fine, it's a need journaling, meditation, you know, getting a reading, being in nature, blah, 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 blah. You've heard this preached to like the high heavens for like however long, but what's that actually got to do with anything and everything? Um, the reason why I, I'm just going to speak from my perspective and why I've actually found it so important and why I will probably continue to implement that in my business. Well, not just my business, my, in my personal life and everything that I do and encourage my kids to do exactly the same as that. It actually has such a profound, freeing moment in your life. When you, um, a moment in life, it's just, it's just a way for you to actually completely tap into your soul, tap into who you are and just be. And for me, the one thing that I do consistently every single day, whether I want to or not someone is i don't want to get out of bed i mean or we come like think about it right now it's winter as we're going into winter and like 6 a.m like it's cold outside like i don't want to get out but i know that if i don't do this first thing in the morning probably never it's never going to get done and i know that it kind of feels my day doesn't feel right if i don't start it with a journaling session and all that I do when I, you know, this, like, I can go into, like, journaling prompts, blah, 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 everything that I do in that, but that journaling time for me is the most sacred and most special time for me. It is a time when I actually sit and I'm actually fully present with myself and soul and spirit and not, there's no other distractions, there's nobody else around. It's just me, my pen, and my book. And we are having a good old time just writing down everything that I want to intend to bring forward, everything that's happened, everything that I'm grateful for. And it, it's just such a cleansing, releasing outlet as well, as well as a creative process as well and manifesting and intention setting process. It is such a, a cleansing process. And I wish somebody had taught me that at a really young age that you know just journal and I know I had the dear diary blah 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 dear diary I like so and so and so today blah blah but I wish that I could have been taught from a um from an early age a little bit more constructive ways to use a journal but I mean besides it is good to just write dear John I like blah 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 dear diary I like John and I can see myself marrying John and blah blah but also just use it as a place to where you write your feelings where you write your innermost deepest thoughts and I kind of always saw journaling and diaries and that kind of thing as a little as little love notes kind of a thing like oh that's where you write like who you love and I love my best friend and I love this and I love that and I have chocolate and I love cake but I never actually saw anything past that could also have something to do with the covers <laughs> the the you know the pretty pinky curly fluffy thingy covers kind of does sort of <laughs> lead into the whole romance of a journaling being a romantic thing and an romantic love letters kind of a thing but I wish back then even that I had used it to its full potential and I know in the beginning when you're small it's going to be well if you're younger it's going to be a little bit not the same effect but it's still a very good practice to get into and I as I say something that I am encouraging with my kids and my son calls it his big book of ideas so um, he writes any ideas that he comes up with any thoughts that he comes up with and how he's feeling he's not consistent in it obviously because the time of recording this is only like seven so well, <laughs> I mean how much is this are you going to get out of seven year old let's, let's be real it's not going to happen but it's still a it's still a thing that's in his life and it's something that I'm going to continue to foster as he gets older and hopefully he'll have the same effect and also what I what I've learned that you can get so much deeper into your thought process, into your subconscious by journaling than you ever can just in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Because when you're in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you kind of tend to put a filter up and put a block up. But in your journal, there's nobody else. It's just you. It's just you deep diving into your thoughts, your feelings, and 
you kind of get pretty deep, pretty personal, pretty intimate with it. And I've written some interesting things in my journal. Um, that's why I don't just throw them away. They're nicely sit down safely away. But it is, it is something that, as I say, I wish I had lived that earlier. Um, alongside with that, so, you know, not getting too far into the craziness of journaling and everything, is meditations. And I'm going to say this. I love guided meditation, but I also don't like guided meditations. <laughs> um, the reason why I say that is it can be quite restrictive at some times. It's some, depending on who it is that you're getting a guided meditation from, because if you listen to it over and over again, your mind starts filling in the blanks, and then it tends to wander. So... It's good enough. And that being said, I mean, I do guided meditations for people and I make guided meditations. So for me to say guided meditations, so I mean, I do believe in them. They have their merit. Um, but for me, I like changing it up. So I listen to one person's guided meditation for about a month or so, then change to a different person, change. And then I've, I've got a few, like five or six people whose meditations I really like. And I'll swap them up just to keep it fresh, keep it going. And that's also the trick, keep pressure going. I do also listen to my own guided meditations, which is, kind of, you know, you wouldn't think that, but it is actually true. But I do listen to my own because they're tailor-made to me. So they're specific to me and they're hitting my, my trigger points and my points that I need to work on. So why would I not listen to my own? Anyway, oh, this craziness, the craziness of these conversations. Um, but yeah, I... I, would, I wish somebody had told me about meditation and journaling at a really young age and just, you know, that aspect of quieting the mind as well. It's amazing what comes up when you quiet a mind. And I, I know, uh, honestly, I know that it can feel so scary to quiet the mind. And this is where I think a lot of us um, don't need to be an intuitive, you don't need to be any special, like, oh, I'm not, this isn't a white mix, I'm not intuitive, or oh, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a doctor, this doesn't apply to me, no. Most of the people that I've come across, it's in that quiet times that we kind of get freaked out by the fact that we've got to be quiet and we've got to listen and listen to soul and listen to our body, and it kind of freaks us the hell out. But, I'm going to put a back, very, very, very big back. My husband always sees, my husband hate it when somebody goes but because his standard line is but negates everything before it <laughs> anyway but yeah it's just uh i'm like kind of laughing at myself because i said but and he's like yeah do you want to negate everything you just said before that but you know <laughs> i did it again what i'm just trying to say is that when you actually listen to a guided meditation and a guided process or even just listening to um, meditation without a guidance it is actually not that scary surprisingly it actually just filters out all the noise all the thoughts that you thought you may be thinking that just tends to start drifting away it tends to start fading away into wherever those thoughts go i'm not even gonna go there because i'm not it's not my area of expertise but it just tends to fade away and what happens is it's an opportunity for your soul to drop in, to come in and say, hey, I'm here, I've always been here. And stop bringing new ideas, new thoughts, new ways of thinking to you that you may not have looked at or known or anything like that. And it's actually quite cool. So, big, big fan of meditations and big fans of journaling. And... Uh, I, I can't, I honestly cannot stress em enough how much I do actually love both of those things. My meditations, I don't do it as regularly. So, I mean, I say that even though I know I do. I do, I do meditations every morning, but it's not a guided meditation. It's just about one or two minutes of actually just sitting down, being quiet, being centered, being focused, and coming to a place of gratitude. And then every second day, I'll actually sit and do about a half an hour to an hour actually meditation t um, connecting in. But on days that I'm not doing that, I am actually doing like mini meditations, like a minute, two minutes, three minutes, here and there, just always connecting 
connecting with myself, aligning my soul, well not my soul, aligning my chakras and just being present. I know it can be really frustrating for me to, for you guys to listen and say, oh well, she just said, okay, we should journal, we should meditate and that's part of the journey, the, un, the uncharted journey of the soul, but actually it is. And the reason why I say it is, because it's like you're in a, when you start journaling and meditating, you start listening to your internal compass more and more and your inner GPS, your inner guiding light, your guiding force. And the more you can start tapping into it and start listening to it and actually not blocking it up with the noise and everything else going outside, the more it is that you can actually go a more soul aligned route, a more soul perspective, a more soul focused outcome to what it is that you want to achieve in life. The more you do that, the more you are actually aligned with what it is that you want to be where it is that you want to go, what it is that you that brings you joy. And for some people, as I said before, it could be that you want to be a doctor, that you want to be an architect, that you want to be a farmer, whatever it is, you don't know that. You don't fully know that. I don't believe you don't fully know that until you actually sit within your soul. Because until you sit with it in your soul, everything, everything that you say is coming from a surface level or from an influence level or, you know, or trying to be cool, or trying to follow the crowd, or trying to go with what your parents said. But until you actually sit and go, oh, this feels right to me, you don't actually know. And the reason why I say this is because I've sat with many people, me included, where I've dived into a career, where I've dived into a job or something, and it just doesn't feel right. And I said this because I remember, I actually, shockingly as it may be, I went to law school and I sat in those lectures and parts of the lectures were really freaking interesting. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I do love a good argument and I'm really good at, I'm really good at a legal argument. And the reason why I went to law school was because I kept on hearing, oh, you'd make such a really good lawyer. You love argument. You're really good with remembering facts. You're really good at nailing people when they say something and they don't follow through. I know. Point of note, if you ever get into a thing with me, I remember things. So that's just like a side note. I've got to remember, I've got a memory like an elephant. But I remember, you know, I remember clearly going into law school with this, oh yeah, I'll be good at it. Because like everyone says I'm going to be good at it and I should be fine at it. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I did ace. I did ace uh, um, law school, but it never, and everyone, because whenever I get asked, why are you in law school? And I was like, oh, well, to help people. Ah, uh, you know, I, I'm having this kind of issues or I've seen this kind of problem, but I could never fully concrete the why. And then I'm like, we had issues with my son. So not going to get into that one, but then I was like, oh, well, that's a good enough, that's a good reason why I'm in law. But it was ne it never actually sat with me. So then when like the semester breaks came and that came, I was just like gone, done, doing something else. And I just didn't feel called, aligned or driven by law. So I could just like do without that um, thing. And like because it was my nature to strive at it and do it well, I did it well. But I was not enjoying it in the freaking slightest. It was like any time I didn't actually have to go into lectures, I wouldn't. And I'd sit at home and rather watch lectures in my pages. Mind you, most people would like to watch, listen to lectures in their pages. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Most of us would like to do that anyway. But it didn't, it didn't, it just didn't gel. It just didn't sit well with me. It just didn't flow. And it was okay. That was fine. But I had learned that I needed to find what was more soul aligned with me and not what everybody else wanted me to do. And at the time of doing law, I was doing what I'm doing now. I was doing the spiritual side of aspect of what I do just as a sideline job, hustle, whatever you want to call it. It wasn't my full time. It wasn't what I did every day. And 
because I had placed so much focus on the law and it, and the perceived thing that I should be doing it. If I was like, oh my gosh, you're going to do law. You're going to be so rich, whatever. And I was like, okay, that's nice. Firstly, didn't actually go into it for the money. Mind you, I have freaking no idea why I'm going into it. Anyway, but I'm doing this. So let's just put a smile on our faces and look freaking pretty and doing it. So yeah, so when I say that you don't know until you know, <laughs> you don't know until you know until you actually dig into your soul, that you figure out what it is that you actually want. It's based on what I've seen in my personal experience, where I know when people actually dig down deep, talk to their soul, talk to who they actually are, and what is that want and where they're coming from, that's when things change. And the way that I found myself um, and found that this wasn't the right fit for me, and instead of just going on the bandwagon of I'm going to be a lawyer, I'm going to be doing this, blah, 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 and ignoring what I actually wanted to do, it, wasn't, it, was, only, it was through journaling and through meditation. But my emphasis is honestly getting, is heavier on the journaling. And it wasn't just through journaling. It was, it was, sorry, it was honestly through journaling that I totally found where it is that I was going, what it is that was my purpose, what it is that I wanted to do, because it had just allowed me a somewhat of an outlet to just be me. Yes, there was other, other factors that played into it, other lessons and modalities that I learned along the way, but by understanding journaling and journaling properly um and i say journaling properly because there is there is a there is a wrong way to journal which sounds crazy to say when i do say there is no right and wrong way but there, uh, there technically is a wrong way when you just sit down and answer a prompt like a question going where do you for example what do, what intention do you want to bring forward for this week some people just go oh well i want to have a good week and no, that's it. And I think that is so wrong because you're just going like literally not even scratching one 0.001% of what it is that you actually want. More more than likely it is you actually want to bring in X amount of money, that you want to um, complete X project, that you want to achieve X in your weight goal, that you want to have a smooth relationship, that you want to do this, this, this. Most of the time, that's actually what your intention is, intention is for the week. But you end up writing some wishy-washy crap on it down of, oh, I just want to have a good week. And that's what I reckon is the wrong way to journal because you're not being fully open, fully honest, and using that, that platform to its full advantage. And literally, that's, you know, in a nutshell, journaling is just a platform that you use to your full advantage and that, that it's there for your benefit so you use it to your benefit at the end of the day I mean that's what it's there for but I digress into talking about right way or wrong way but yeah it's not like delved down too too much further into the right or wrong ways of journaling um more so into the fact that journaling is just I see journaling as such a just such a, honestly an amazing beautiful thing and some it's something that I've used to get me where I am now and will continue to use to get me where I want to go is you know and I'll say that again because journaling got me to where I am now and will continue to get me to where I want to go it's because it allows me to be clear concise and just open with what I want to achieve, where I want to go, and what it will be. So take it for what it is. That as that this is the this is the uncharted soul. This is the uncharted journey. This is just my my um ah, blah, blah. listen to me going going crazy there. It's just my my experience, my my take on what I learned, what I've experienced, and what I've seen in others as well. And journaling is the most underrated 
and the most amazing tool out there. And second to that would be your meditations. And I say, I wish somebody had told me this when I was trying to figure things, everything out, had told me that at the time, it would have made life so much easier. Honestly, it would have made life so much easier. But that being said, I am not going to dive any more deeper into journaling. I want to invite you to share with me where it is that you are in your journey. Where it is that you feel stuck. Where it is that you feel that you need. Where in areas of your life that you feel that you need. And please, I, I encourage you to just send me a message. So if you're listening to this, send me a message. Or if you're watching this, leave me a comment. And I'd like to know where it is that you are on your journey, what it is in this uncharted journey of yourself. Because for me, as say, this is just me sharing what I find along the way, what I am finding along the way, and where you're going and what Spirit wants me to share with you. So with that, guys, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of the Uncharted Soul. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye.